Drink this, don't drink that. I'm talking about what you can consume and what you should not consume during the fasting period of your intermittent fasting diet. But first off, welcome to the new studio. Six Pack Abs is bringing you some awesome content and that means stepping up the game. So let's get right to the science, just like we always do. What can you consume when you are intermittent fasting? Well, not a lot of stuff. The whole idea is that you're fasting, but I wanna give you the breakdown of a couple things that you can sip on throughout the course of the day that will not break your fast and will actually enhance and totally increase the effectiveness of your fasting window. The first one is going to be apple cider vinegar. Most people know me as either the inflammation guy or the apple cider vinegar guy. I was literally walking to the park with my wife and my dogs last week and some guy comes up to me and says, hey, can I drink the apple cider vinegar drink that you talk about on YouTube in this time of day or that time of day? I don't even remember the question that he asked because I was too busy laughing at the fact that he recognized me as the apple cider vinegar guy. But either way, here we go. Apple cider vinegar contains something known as acetic acid, okay? Acetic acid is really unique in that it increases mineral uptake within the body, okay? This mineral uptake is super important when it comes down to fasting because a lot of times you're mineral deprived. You haven't been eating, so that's the one thing you're depleting a lot of. You're depleting a lot of your potassium, a lot of your sodium, you're depleting a lot of your magnesium, all things that are critical to your success. And what the acetic acid and the apple cider vinegar is going to do is it's going to help your body absorb minerals from meals that were even 6, 8, 10, 12 hours prior. So you're still getting the minerals, but without the calories. Now additionally, apple cider vinegar has a ton of what are known as polyphenols. Polyphenols essentially turn into a prebiotic type of fiber. They're like a fertilizer for the bacteria within your gut. So therefore, they end up promoting the growth of lactobacillus, which is an extremely, extremely important bacteria when it comes down to overall intestinal health and our immune system. And when you're fasting, heck, you're getting an immune benefit anyway, so you might as well support the immune system through the gut too. Next up is going to be sipping on sea salt water throughout the course of the day. Now, I don't literally mean go down to the water and dip in a big scoop of the ocean water. I don't mean that at all. I mean add some sea salt to your water. What I do is when I'm drinking out of a gallon jug or anything like that, I add about a half a teaspoon of sea salt to that whole jug. And that works perfect when I'm fasting. Again, it all has to do with the fact that we're depleting our minerals, especially if you're working out when you're fasting. We need that sodium potassium ion exchange to occur. You see, if we don't have sodium in the body, the cells can't uptake sodium and potassium properly and can't have the water inside the cell. Therefore, we're not actually getting the energy. That ion exchange is extremely important. We end up requiring something that's known as the sodium potassium ATPase enzyme. And that enzyme right there helps create energy, helps create ATP. So without sodium and potassium crossing through each other and crossing next to each other through a cell membrane, it's hard to have energy, even when we're fasting. So next up, add a little bit of cream of tartar to your water. Now I know that's kind of a weird thing, right? But cream of tartar has a ton of potassium in it. Okay, just a tiny, tiny bit has more than your daily allowance of it. So if you wanna add that to your water along with your salt, you totally can. But here's how you can tell if you're potassium deficient. If while you are working out, you are having cramps, it's a potassium deficiency. If you're cramping up after your workouts, it's a magnesium deficiency. It's important to know the difference. So if you cramp up while you're walking or you cramp up while you're actually working out, you might be someone that needs to add the cream of tartar to your water throughout the course of the day, more so than just the sodium. Next up, the drink I want you to consume lots of is green tea. Tea will not break a fast. There's no metabolic response. There's no insulin response. It's just flat out good stuff, okay? And the EGCG, which is known as epigallocatechin 3 gallate has a strong effect on satiation. It does this by increasing levels of cholecystokinin, CKK. CKK actually triggers the satiation response within your brain. More of that CKK means you're gonna be able to handle the day that much better. EGCG also does one other thing, and it triggers the release of norepinephrine. Or norepinephrine is a catecholamine that triggers the release of fat for energy. A catecholamine is something that's released during that fight or flight response, okay, whenever your cortisol levels go up, and that happens when you're fasting to begin with. So if you can exacerbate it a little bit with the green tea, then boom, you've got a perfect recipe for some awesome fat burning and getting ripped as quick as you possibly can. Which leads me into my next drink that you can drink throughout the course of the day, and that's coffee. Coffee will not break a fast. If I had a dollar for every person that asked that question, I could probably at least buy like a 1989 Honda or something like that. I get asked it a lot. The thing is that black coffee blocks adenosine. Now the blocking of adenosine 
consequently allows the subsequent increase of those catecholamines like norepinephrine, dopamine, and epinephrine in general. Again, like I mentioned in the last section, that's going to improve your fat burning rate. That's going to help you burn more fat. But it does one other thing. Coffee increases the number of receptors for GABA. GABA is gamma amino butyric acid, and what GABA does is it helps make you calm, okay? It helps make you relax, satiated, feeling overall good. You want to feel good. Now, when you're fasting and you have an increase in the ability of your body to use GABA, you're going to have a sense of calmness, a sense of relief. You're going to feel satiated. But there's kind of an opposition to that too. At the same time that your body increases the receptors for GABA, it also stops the production of new GABA. Now this may sound bad, but actually it's good. So instantaneously when you drink coffee, you're going to uptake more GABA, which is why you feel good all of a sudden when you drink coffee. But if you have too much GABA, it's going to make you feel so good that you're relaxed and sleepy. So it's actually good that it stops the production of it after the coffee starts to kind of wear off a little bit. Okay, now let's get to what not to drink really quick. And this is a short list to be completely honest because most of this stuff is obvious. But because you're drinking that black coffee, does not mean that you can be adding creamers, does not mean that you can be adding sugars. You really shouldn't even add a ton of sweeteners to it. You should just drink it black. That's a big mistake. So don't consume the creamers, don't add the sugar, nothing like that. Not even almond milk, not even cashew milk, not even soy milk. It will break your fast. Okay, the next one, don't sip on branched chain amino acids throughout the course of the day. People always think that you're okay to do that. Terry Crews did a video on that talking about how he sips on BCAAs when he's fasting. No, he's not fasting if he's doing that. The leucine in the BCAAs will trigger an insulin response, albeit very short, it still will kick you out of that fasting state which defeats the entire purpose. Now the other thing that you should avoid is going to be sugar alcohols in your drinks. So diet sodas that contain Truvia. Truvia specifically is a sugar alcohol that is a polyol that still has a caloric response. I hate to say this, but if you're going to absolutely have to use a sweetener, you might have to go for something like Splenda. Now I'm not the biggest proponent of that, but it's not going to break your fast. Okay, so don't quote me on that. I don't want you to come back to me when you end up having an issue with killing off 50% of your gut bacteria, which Splenda does, but that's the only artificial sweetener that you could probably get away with. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on sixpackabs.com and make sure that you're getting the most out of your fast by abiding by every single thing that I say in this video. I will see you in the next sixpackabs.com video.